Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve audio crash course. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jay Yudlovsky and here we talk about DaVinci Resolve, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even a little bit of video and video editing. But this video, it's all about audio in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump into the video. All right, so as I mentioned, this is a DaVinci Resolve audio crash course. Maybe you're new to uh, DaVinci Resolve. You wanna know how to work with your audio. What can I do with it? What can I not do? That's what we're gonna talk about here today. So check out the description below. I'm gonna link to different times in the video, really just to make it easier for you to jump around the video and get to the things that you wanna know. If you're looking to create your first project in DaVinci Resolve and you're not sure how to get started and what settings to use, check out this video up here I'm gonna link to. And uh, that's another crash course that I did to help you get going on your first project in DaVinci Resolve. But this video, it's all about audio. So all these things that we're gonna talk about here today are things that I use for my YouTube channel, for my videos here. I'm gonna go over basic stuff just to help you get going. So grab your cup of joe, sit back, get comfortable, relax, and uh, let's go learn some DaVinci Resolve audio together. So we're in DaVinci Resolve here and I'm in the edit tab. And one of the good things about audio in DaVinci Resolve here is that you've got two places or actually three places you can work on it. You can work on your audio in the cut tab, in the edit tab and in the Fairlight tab. And we're going to be working with audio in both the edit tab and the Fairlight tab. So first we're going to get going in the edit tab. I'm going to show you some of the tools we have here and how you can do some basic things right here in the edit tab without even having to go to the Fairlight tab. So first thing I need to do is create a new timeline. I'm going to right click timelines, create new timeline, and I'm going to call this audio crash course. And I'm going to create two audio tracks here because we're going to need another audio track as we move forward here. So I'm going to click create. And now I have my video and two audio tracks. So now we want to add in some media into our timeline. So I've got this clip here that I filmed my 5D Mark IV. So I'm going to drag that down and drop it in my timeline. So the clip on the top here is our video and our clip on the bottom here is our audio. So if you're not seeing the waveforms or if your clips look a little bit different, you can come over here to the timeline view options and you've got different options in here and how you can see your clips. So this top right one here is your audio waveforms. So you can turn that on and then you'll be able to see what your waveforms look like. And I think that's always a pretty helpful tool to have on. Next, you have your video view options. And if yours looks like this right now, you're not gonna be able to access a few features that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you here. So you wanna make sure you have either the center one or the one on the left here selected. And these two here show you some different options that you can select if you'd like to. You can also adjust the height of your video and audio tracks. So I'm gonna make my audio track a little bigger, turn my waveforms on, and I'm all set with my view here, I like that. So now that we've got our clip in the timeline, we can do a lot of similar things like we can with our video clips. For example, we can trim our audio clips, we can use our shortcuts, which I use Command or Control B. We can cut up our audio clips however we'd like. Undo that. If you wanted to play through your clip, it's just like playing through a video clip with your space bar. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip. Let's say maybe you wanted to raise and lower your volume, and there's a few ways you can do that. So there's a line right here through the middle of your clip, and if you click on that and drag it up, you're going to be raising your volume. And if you drag it down, you're going to be lowering your volume. One of the other ways that you can adjust the volume on your clip is to select your clip, come up to the inspector, and you've also got your clip volume right here. So if I double click on volume, that's gonna bring my volume back to zero. And that doesn't mean zero as in there's no sound, it means zero as in you haven't made a change from your original clip. So if I play through, you'll see we can still hear it. Audio crash course here, guys. And you can adjust your audio here and raise it up if you'd like, lower it down, and you can see our waveforms and this line move at the same time as our clip volume up here. In the inspector, you also have several other options. You can adjust your clip pan, the pitch, the EQ. Um, it's a very basic EQ here, but you can do some simple changes here if you want. There is a more detailed EQ over in the Fairlight tab, which we'll get to in a little bit. So some of the other things you can do in the edit tab, let's say you wanted to fade in your clip. Well, when you hover over your clip, you see this little uh, icon up here in the top left. Let me close my inspector here. And also on the top right of your clip. So you can just click on that and drag it in. And what that's doing is fading your clip in or out. So let me drag that in here. I'll play through and you can see how that sounds. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be- So you can see fade in and same on the end of the clip, you can fade the clip out. Another cool thing you can adjust is this little point here. This is a keyframe on your fade in. So if you just hover over it, click and you drag down or up, that changes the way the clip fades in. So if we wanted to ramp up and fade in a little quicker. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This you can do that. Or if you want it to come in 
quicker in the beginning and then slower at the end. You can do it that way. Welcome to the audio crash. So it's nice to have that option. You can make those simple changes right here in the edit tab. So if you wanted to in the edit tab here, you can come up to your effects library, come down to your audio effects. And here you've got all your audio effects uh, that you would see over in your Fairlight tab but you can just click one and drag it right over onto your clip if you want to use it that way. So let's say for example, I wanted to use a uh, multi-band compressor. You can come over and just drag it on there and it'll pop up this window. And this is the same window that you would see in the Fairlight tab, but you get it right here in the edit tab. So for me, I like to apply these, some of these effects to the whole track. So I'm going to do it in the Fairlight tab, but it's nice to know that you have the option to use some of these uh, effects and features right here in the edit tab. So that's some of the simple edits that you can do right here in the edit tab. Now we're gonna jump over to the Fairlight tab where you can actually get more in depth with your audio and do more things with it. So if you click on the little musical notes down here, that's your Fairlight tab. And this is a full audio editor. Um, I love this, this Fairlight tab. There's tons of great features in here, more than I'll cover here. And I've got other videos on it, so you can go check those out. But uh, lots of great stuff here. So if you're just getting started, let's just go over the layout of everything real quick. So up here along the top, we've got the same uh, menus that we can open as we do in the edit tab. We've got some extras actually, like in this case, we have our meters here at the top, which as we play through the clip here, you're gonna see. Welcome to the audio. You're gonna see the meters working. We have our media pool in case you need to grab a clip and drag it in. So let's just say I actually wanna add in our uh, music track. I'm gonna click on this and drag it on over here. And it'll just drop it on the timeline for us in our audio two track. But close that, you've got your audio effects here that you can drag onto each clip just as we did over in the edit tab. We're also gonna be able to add it to the track, but we'll get to that in a minute. You have an index which shows you your clips and gives you some information about them. You've got a sound library that you can set up. It doesn't come with the sound library, uh, although they did say they were gonna release a sound library with, I thought it was version 16, but I haven't seen it yet. so. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but you, if you have sound effects, you can create your own sound library. So everything's here, you can search for it. Super handy, super helpful that you can just add stuff into your video when you need it. Continuing across, you have your mixers here. Your mixers have your faders as well as a whole bunch of other information here. You've got your inputs, your effects, um, dynamics, pan, where your audio is getting sent, all kinds of uh, in-depth stuff here that we'll get into later on. You've got your meters that show you kind of levels you got on each channel. You have your metadata for each clip, if that's something you want to know about. And you also have your inspector over here, which has the same information as it did over in the edit tab. Coming down to the middle section here, you have your uh, time count, how long your video has been going. You've got your play, stop, record buttons, your loop buttons. You have your selector button here, a range selector, so you can work on just part of the clip. You have markers, you have different timeline view options. You can try those, see what you like. You can make your clips bigger, wider. You can zoom in, zoom out, all kinds of good tools right in here that you can try out. Continuing on the left here, you've got your audio tracks. And actually, since we're here, I'm gonna rename our tracks. You can just double click the name there. I'm gonna call this one 5D Mark IV. And this one I'm just gonna call music. And then just hit enter. And you notice a couple different icons here on each track. So the first one is lock. You can lock the track so you can't make any changes. The R is for recording on your track. S is for solo, which means play only that track and nothing else. And M means mute that track. And you have all those options for each one of your tracks. So I'm gonna mute our music track for now. And we're just gonna work with our vocal audio track. So we can see that I had faded in the audio. So I'm just gonna bring that back reset that. I'm also going to click on the clip. I'm going to right click and say remove attributes. And I'm going to remove everything because I had a plugin on there that I didn't want there anymore because uh, we're going to start from scratch here in the Fairlight tab. One thing you want to pay attention to is your meters. So your meter over here, your meter up here on your channel over here and on the side of the audio clip are all going to be the same. They're going to be reading for this clip right here. So I want to watch it and see if I'm, my meters are getting into the red anywhere. The ideal place for my vocal audio to be is between minus 10 and minus 15 decibels. That's where I'm going to try and make this clip live. So as I play through, let's watch those meters and kind of see where some of the levels fall. A little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Okay, so we can see that on our meters, some of the audio in the clip here is peaking up into the red. Now you'll notice there's a little line there that stays there in the meter. Let's play this a little crash course. So this right here. So that's telling me where the peak of my audio is. 
So seeing that it's only up at minus five, that's too high. I don't, I don't want it to be that high. So where do we start working with this audio? What do we do? The first thing that I would do is come in and normalize the audio level. Normalizing the audio level helps set the peaks of your audio to a certain level and then adjust everything else below it accordingly. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on my clip. I'm going to right click and come down to normalize audio levels. So here my normalization mode, I'm going to leave at sample peak program and the target level is minus nine decibels. So that means it's going to take the loudest point of my clip and set it at minus nine decibels. So what that means is that it's going to look at the clip and pick the highest peak of the audio and it's going to set that at minus nine and then everything else will go along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click normalize here. All right, so it normalized the audio level. And if we want to see what it did, you still have your clip selected. If you go into the inspector and I look right here at my volume, you can see it lowered the volume to minus six. So let's play through the clip here and just see how it sounds with the normalized audio levels. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here. And if we look over here, we see our levels are not as high. Tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. And uh, let's okay, so I can see right off the bat, it looks like it's a little low. And even looking at my waveforms here, the peaks are a little taller in the beginning here as compared to the rest of the clip. So what I want to do is actually boost it back up and I can take care of the first part of this clip with the higher audio levels uh, separately. But overall, um, I want my clip to be in that negative 10 to negative 15 range. So I'm going to come into my inspector and I'm going to boost it up just a little bit to uh, minus 3.47. And let's play it back now and see what we get. And again, I know that this is going to be higher than the rest of the clip, but we'll deal with that in just a little bit. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. All right, so it's getting closer. Let me just bump it up a little bit more. I'm going to do minus three even and see how that looks. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how. All right, so it's not too bad. Um, we're going to continue to work with it a little bit more, but I think that's a little bit better than it was We're going to use before. in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Could probably even boost it up just a little bit more. Let's do minus two. Clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. All right, so I think that's pretty good for now. Now there's different ways that we can handle the louder part of the clip here. One way is to use keyframes. So we can come to our audio clip here and there's a few ways you can add keyframes. So let's say that I wanted to make from there to right about here a lower volume. Since I can see that's where I have larger waveforms. But one way to add a keyframe is to come to your volume line here. You see your little arrows up and down. And if you hold option or alt and you click, it'll add a keyframe point. So I'm gonna add another one right before that. And then I'm gonna come to uh, the end of my section here that I wanna change the volume for. And I'm gonna control click and control click again. Now I can just come into the audio clip here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I can come into my clip and lower the volume of just that section. So let's play through and see what that looks like on our meters. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here. We're going to All right, so that helped. So that's one way that you can do it. Another way you can add your keyframes is by placing your playhead wherever you want to add a keyframe, come to your inspector, and you can select the diamonds over here. So for volume, you would select this diamond. And you can see it added a keyframe in for us. So you can do it either way. It doesn't matter whichever way works best for you. But it's nice to know that you got options and different ways of doing things. So I'm going to bring that back up just a touch. And let's play through, see how our meters look. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use. In All right, so that looks pretty good. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for now. And then we'll move ahead and do some other things that will help with the, the peaking up into the red there. So the next thing that I want to do with my audio clip here is do a little EQ. So coming into the mixer panel here, we've got all kinds of great things uh, to work with. And this is where we're going to spend the next little bit of time. So starting with EQ, I'm going to double click on the EQ for my 5D Mark IV track. Like I think I mentioned earlier in the video, if you've got some good headphones or good speakers, that really helps to hear the small differences and the nuances in these things that you're going to be changing. So I would recommend using some good speakers or good headphones if you have them. So let's jump into the EQ here. 
All you have to do to open it is double click on it. So this is our equalizer window here, and you've got six bands of EQ that you can adjust. So it's a, like I said, it's a little more detailed than what you can get in the inspector. And this is generally where I'm gonna do the bulk of my EQ work. So I'll just give you a few tips here. I do have another video uh, about EQ with a little more information on it. I'll link to that above, you can check that out. So here's just some basic EQ principles that you can use to help your audio sound better. The first thing that I would do is turn on band one. And if you click on this little button right here next to band one, it gives you different styles of uh, EQ that you can do. So what we wanna use for this band one is what that's going to do is cut out all the sound that falls below our frequency is that the we high select. Pass filter. So for most vocal tracks, you want to bring your frequency up to about 100 because you don't need any of the frequencies below that. That's just going to make your audio sound muddy. So you don't need that. So you can bring your band one up to around 100 hertz. The next thing that I would do is come up to band six at the top. And here we want a low pass filter. So when I turn on band six, that's going to take out everything to the right of my point. So right now it's set at 13,000 uh, kilohertz, and that might be okay. You could boost it up maybe 14,000, but a lot of these real high pitch sounds you don't need in your vocal audio. So I generally will turn that on and have a low pass filter. So now I'm gonna play through, and in here is the sound that we're gonna be getting from our microphone. So now that we made those two adjustments, I'm gonna turn the EQ off, play some of the clip, and then turn it on and see if you can hear a difference. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to. So it's very slight, it's just a little difference, but it is in there. Now that we've got those two uh, bands set, I wanna move on to find the problem areas of my audio. So I'm gonna start with my band two, and you wanna change your type to the second one down here. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to grab our point number two, we're gonna bring it over above our point one, and I wanna come down to the Q factor. The Q factor affects how wide of a change you're gonna make. So if I boost that Q factor up, I get a nice peak, and if I bring that Q factor down, it makes it a nice gradual uh, change there in the EQ. So to find our problem areas, you wanna boost up the Q quite high. Generally, I just crank it all the way up, and then I wanna pull my point all the way up on the equalizer. Now what I'm gonna do is called sweeping the EQ. So I'm gonna play my audio, I'm gonna grab my point, number two here, and I'm gonna sweep it back and forth until I hear something that doesn't sound good. And then once I do find that point that doesn't sound good, I'm gonna stop and then we will lower the gain for that point, which will effectively remove that sound that we don't wanna hear. So let's play the clip and I'm gonna sweep around the EQ on the number two point. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out. So I hear something right there that doesn't sound so hot. So I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna drop this down. And how much you drop it down is just dependent on how what you think sounds good. I mean, usually minus five decibels is okay. You can go more if you need to, but you just play with it and see what you think sounds best. So now let's play this again. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This and if I turn it off and then turn it on, see how it sounds. It's gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial. To so it seems like it helps clear it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with point number three, and we already have the right type of EQ selected here. I'm gonna boost up that Q factor, sweep it around, and look for any sounds that I don't like. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps. All right, so right there doesn't sound too good to me. I'm gonna bring that down and I'm actually gonna open this up a little bit because I noticed from, oh, I'd say, I don't know, maybe 350 to 400 uh, hertz up to maybe 800, it sounded a little, I don't know, it didn't sound good, I didn't like it. So I'm gonna open that up to remove a little bit more of those frequencies. So let's uh, just drop it down a little more. I'm gonna play through and see how that sounds. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so next I'm gonna try it with the band four, and a lot of uh, the vocal range is in between the one and 2,000 kilohertz range. Sometimes you'll find things that don't sound good in that range as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing, boost my cue, bring my gain up, and listen for things I don't like. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so in that whole range, it kinda doesn't sound so hot. So I'm gonna bring this down, and I might actually put this right in the middle and open it up a little bit 
because on either side of that one around 1000 and 2000 it had some spots that didn't sound so great so i'm going to play through just adjust this a little and do what i think sounds good Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. And, and now I'm going to turn it off, turn it on, see how it sounds. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. All right, so I think that sounded pretty good. Number, number five points. Sometimes I adjust it, sometimes I don't. I'm just going to play through one more time and see if I need to adjust that at all. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. And uh, let's get into it. So sometimes if you boost the range above, say, 3000 kilohertz, it'll help with the clarity of your audio. Other times you might want to drop it down a little bit. It really just depends on the microphone you're using and the person who's talking and just how you think it sounds overall. So I'm pretty happy here with this EQ for now. I'm going to leave that. And if we, it sounds like we need to boost up the audio, because when you drop some of these points on the EQ, you might lose a little bit of your volume. You can come over to your gain section here and you can boost that up a little bit um, just to make up some of the volume you may have lost. So I'm going to play through and see if I need to do that. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. And if I look down here too, we want to see where are we're falling in our audio range. And we want to be in that 10 to 15 range if possible. Guys, this is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. And uh, let's get into it. All right, so I boosted it just a little bit on the gain there. So I'm happy with the EQ here. I'm going to leave it as it is. And let's say just for example that you use uh, this microphone all the time and you want to save your EQ settings, you can come up to the Fairlight menu at the top, come down to Preset Library, and then you have an option to be able to save your equalizer. You can filter by Equalizer Presets, select the track that you want to save it from. In my case, 5D Mark IV. I'm going to say Save New. And this is the Rode Lav Mic. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that's how you would save your preset. And just in case you're wondering, let's say you go to the next project and you need to load that preset. You come back up to the Fairlight tab, preset library. You go to equalizer presets, select the track that you want, select the preset that you want, and you can apply it to that channel and it'll apply the EQ to that channel for you. So that's EQ in a nutshell. Again, I have another video on that. It goes a little more in depth. You can go check that out if you are interested in more EQ. The next thing that I'm gonna do is come over to the Dynamics section. I'm gonna double click on that, and that's gonna bring up our Dynamics window. So our Dynamics window has a few different uh, sections here. We have our input levels, which is what's coming into the Dynamics section. We have our uh, graph here that shows you what you're doing, whether you're expanding, using your gate, your compressor. You have your gain reduction. This just shows you a meter of the changes that are getting applied to your clip. Makeup is something that you can use to boost the volume of your clip, because as you make some of these changes you might lose some volume so the makeup helps you bring that level back up and over here you have your output so the first thing that i usually do is uh, come down and click on this send button what that's going to do is it's going to take your audio track from my vocals here and it's going to send it out to any other channels that are listening and we'll get to that in a little while why we want to do that um, but if you have a music track underneath your audio tracks you're going to want to turn that send on because that's going to help us later on with some uh, automatic ducking that resolve can do for us so anyway all you need to know for now is just turn on that send button next i want to turn on my compressor what a compressor does is allows you to set a level once your video is playing. If you have any audio levels that come in over a certain point that you set, it will reduce that level. For example, if we have uh, like the beginning of our clip, we had some peaks. So when those levels come in and they peak, it's automatically going to bring back the volume of those peaks. So they're not so much louder than everything else. It's going to compress that portion of your audio. So let's play through the clip here and we can see how it works. So I want to watch my input and see what we're getting, watch my output. We can go from there. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps. So we can see I'm getting some peaking on the input up into the red here, and I don't want that. So for your threshold here, you wanna set that to what the approximate lowest level of your audio is. So if I play through. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use. It looks like minus 15 might actually be okay. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. Your ratio is how much do you want to compress your audio once it goes above your threshold level. So I'm gonna just say for now, let's do uh, 
Let's just do two to one and leave it like that. We'll see how that works. Your attack is how quickly does that compressor kick in? Do you want it to come in really fast or do you want it to ease in a little bit slower? So usually I'll leave that at uh, whatever it's set at. And if you change any of these knobs, a real quick tip, double click on the tab and it'll reset it to whatever the default is. The hold button here is how long is it gonna hold that compressor on when there's no talking or no audio on your track. So spaces between your words, for example, how long is it gonna hold on to that compressor? So I usually boost this up uh, to around 1265, 1200, anywhere between 1000 and 1500 milliseconds. The release is, okay, once the person is done talking, the audio is done, how long until the volume goes back to the normal level. So I usually put that around 1500, which is like 1.5 seconds. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but be in the ballpark. And if you play with these, uh, with the hold and the release, as you're playing through your clip, you'll hear the differences and see what they do. But generally, this is where I keep my settings for the compressor. So let's play through that and let's just see how that's sounding. And I'm going to watch my meters over here to see where my output falls. And again, I want to look between that 10 and 15 range. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here. We're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to. All right, so it's not bad. It looks like it's a little low, so I'm gonna boost my makeup a little bit. And you can see it raises my, my graph over here a little bit to show me what I'm doing. So I'm gonna boost it, let's say, by three. And uh, we're gonna play through the clip. And again, I'm watching the output over here. I'm gonna be between 10 and 15, which is about here. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. So you can see I had some peaks up high, so if that's your case, I can drop or bring up the ratio a little bit more, so it'll grab those peaks as I'm playing through the clip. Let's do it one more time, and I think uh, we'll be okay with the compressor here. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to. So you can see on the input it's peaking, but on our output it's staying right where I want it to be. And that's what the compressor is gonna do for us. Some of the other features in the dynamics panel here is the expander and the gate. So the expander is gonna expand your uh, dynamic range, so to speak, of your audio. I don't use it too often. Um, we can try here, play through, and see if it makes a difference. I'll play it and then turn it on and see if we get a difference here. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in. So I don't know it's too much of a difference. Oh. Most of the time I don't use that. The other tool that we have here is an audio gate. And I do use this uh, fairly often. So what's the gate for? The gate helps reduce any sound on your audio track below a certain point that you set. For example, I might use this when I'm recording and in my office here, let's say the fans of my computer are on and let's say that I pause uh, between a sentence or something and you can hear the fans in the background or you hear some background noise, but it's really low in the decibels. It's not very loud, but I don't want it to be there. When I use the gate, I can set the level of the gate to cut out all that background noise when nobody's talking. It's not gonna take out the background noise while I'm talking, but when you have quiet areas on your audio track, it can drop down the level so that you don't get any hiss or background noise or anything like that. So I'm gonna try playing that and we're gonna adjust the gate. And actually right in the beginning here is, is a good example. So I, I don't have any words here in the beginning. I'm gonna turn off the gate and if you just listen, you're gonna hear a little bit of static. So you hear that? Okay, so now if I turn on the gate, and I'm gonna lower that threshold down a little bit. And now I'm gonna play, and now you shouldn't hear anything here until I start talking. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be And you can see it still sounds a little wonky, um, and that's because I have my threshold set too high. It's cutting out a little too much. So I'm gonna bring that back some more and try it again. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be and you can just play with these settings until you get something that you think sounds good, and maybe it's dropping it down too much. So your range, will affect how much audio it cuts down and how much it drops those levels. So I'm gonna bring that back up a little bit and let's try it again. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here. And bring it up a little bit cause it sounds like it's dropping a little too much uh, for my liking. So let's try it again here. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here. All right, so I think that's okay for now. I'm gonna leave that uh, like that. I bring it back just a little. And then down here on the bottom of the gate section here, you have your, again, your attack, your hold and your release. So I'm gonna adjust those up because I want the effect to stay active for a little bit. I don't want to just cut in and out real quick. So let's say maybe half a second on the hold and half a second on the release. And then uh, let's play through that and see how that sounds. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial 
to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this. And you can adjust all these as you think sounds best for your video and your clip. And the last section here is the limiter. And what this does is puts a hard limit on the volume that comes out of your audio clip. And you can do this per track. You can do it on your overall main input. I generally don't use it because I set all my le audio levels low enough where I don't have to worry about it. But uh, you have that option there to limit the amount of your audio. So that does it for the dynamic section. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And the next thing that I like to do is come and start working with some effects. So to add an effect, I'm going to click on the plus button on my track. I'm going to come to Fairlight Effects, and the first thing I'm going to add is a de -esser. So sometimes you'll notice that your audio has uh, very sharp sounding S's and the tss -tss sounds um, are just a little harsh. So there's uh, different ways you can deal with that. One is to use pop filters and that kind of stuff to help reduce some of those harsh sounds. But if you're like me and you don't use one, um, you can use the de which will help as well. So there's some presets up here, and I'll usually come down and uh, add in the mail de -esser. and I usually make it uh, the this top option here for the range, which makes it very uh, steep. So I'm going to play through the video clip, and I'm going to listen for the S's, and uh, when I find them, because you can drag this around, when I find them, then I'm going to stop and make my adjustments from there. Now I'm going to play through my clip, and I'm going to click on this little button here, listen to S only. So that way I can only hear the S's um, and I'm going to find where it sounds the worst and I'm going to stop there. So let's play through the clip and listen. Audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course. Hope this helps out. All right. And then let's undo that. And now let's play through again and see if it makes a difference. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so you can adjust that. I think I'm just gonna go back to the preset and just kind of keep it there for now and go with that. After I apply a de -esser, the next thing that I like to do is come down and add a multi-band compressor. So the compressor on the dynamics panel adjusts the overall compression for the track. The multi-band compressor allows us to compress certain frequency ranges where we might have most of our audio. For example, between 370 and 5700 is where most of your vocals fall. So I'm going to play through the clip and uh, let's just see how it sounds. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. And when you see the red line moving, that means it's compressing those particular areas. Guys, this is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. So we can see most of our audio is happening here and that's where it's getting compressed so we're not uh, having our levels shoot up too high. But I do notice that it did pull them down a little bit. We're closer to the minus 15 decibel range here. So you can always come down to your master section, grab your gain and pull it up just a little bit. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use. And just a little bit more. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. So I think that does a good job of just kind of evening things out a little bit. I'm going to turn it off, play through, and then I'll turn it on halfway through to see if we can hear a difference. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. All right, sounds good. So I think that's all we have to do in the multiband compressor here. Again, you've got lots of options and things you can change. Generally, I find that the default settings are okay for me. Maybe I'll adjust the gain a little bit or adjust my band slightly, but most of the time it does an okay job just to turn it on and use it with the default settings. And if you're looking to add any other kinds of effects, there's all kinds of cool things in here. You've got a dialogue processor, you've got echoes and all kinds of stuff that you can do in here. Change the pitch of your voice. You want to have a super deep voice, high voice, reverbs, all kinds of fun stuff in there that you can try and play with. One of the ones that I found helpful sometimes, depending on how my audio gets recorded, is the stereo fixer. So I'm just going to click on that and show you what it is. So when I play through my clip, uh, this track is a stereo track, although a lot of times you can just leave your talking tracks as a mono track, but here it's a stereo track for right now. And here it shows me inputs. So on my meters here, we have the left input and the right input. And if I play through, of course here, guys, this is gonna as we've been talking, you see the meters moving. Let's say that one side of my input, say the left side was higher than the right side. Well, if your audio is coming out uneven through your speakers, you have a few options. You can either A, make your track a mono track, and then it's going to come the same to both sides, or you can come into this stereo fixer, and it gives you the ability to adjust 
your audio to come out from your right or left channels. So it, let's just, for example, play it and uh, adjust one of these so you can see what happens. And if you have headphones on or speakers that are left and right, that's where you're going to notice the difference. If your speakers just are mono, then you're not going to notice the difference on here and you can skip ahead to the next section. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out. All right, so if you had some headphones on or speakers, you should have heard it going back and forth a little bit between your left and right channels. But this is a good tool to use if you ever have an issue where, where your audio is stronger on one channel versus the other, it helps you even it out. So I'm gonna come over and just delete that last stereo fixer because I don't need it on this track. So now that we've got our vocals all set, I wanna add in a music track. And we have our music track down here. So let's mute our audio track here, our 5D Mark IV. I'm gonna mute that by pressing the M button. And then I'm gonna come down to my music track and I'm gonna turn that on. So let's just play a clip of it here to see how it's sounding. We can see that from our waveforms here, it looks like it's a lot louder than our speaking track which is not what we want, but we'll get there and we'll see how we can make adjustments to fix that. So my music track, let's play through, see what we have. And I'm gonna watch my meters over here to see where our levels are falling. Okay, so we see it's peaking up pretty high, almost to minus five decibels. So when I have music playing, um, I wanna set the levels, again, to be in that 10 to 15 range so that when I'm not talking and I want the music to be at a reasonable volume, it will be there. And then I'm gonna show you how you can set audio ducking and things so that when you do have talking tracks or you are speaking in your video, the volume is automatically gonna drop down for your music tracks and you don't have to go in and do keyframes and change you know, certain parts of your music tracks or anything like that. It's gonna do it all automatic for you, which makes it super easy. Also, another thing to note is I don't generally use EQ or effects or anything else on music tracks because Generally, the music tracks that I have are already pretty mixed and, and come from some professional source, so I don't need to go through and do anything with them other than adjust the volumes and do audio ducking and that kind of stuff. So right now I know it's too loud, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to normalize the audio of this music track. I'm going to right click, I'm going to come up to normalize audio levels, and again I'm just going to use the sample peak program, minus 9 decibels for the target level, and click normalize. So you can see it dropped it all down quite a bit, so so let's hear how loud that is now. And if I look over here, looks like it's in my 10 to 15 range. And let's get to the loudest point here, see where that falls on our meter. And that's great. So it looks like the peak of the waveforms is right there at minus nine where it should be. So let's say I like that, it's loud enough and I think it's good. Um, I'm gonna turn on my vocal talking track just to see how the two play together and uh, just see what we need to do next. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is going to be a little clip here we're going to use in our... So we see now both of our levels for our 5D Mark IV talking track and our music track are about the same. But what I want to do is actually change the level of my music tracks to be down in the green area while I am talking in the video because I don't want my voice to have to compete with the music in the video. So... How can I do that? There's a few ways you can do that. If you want to lower the overall volume of the track and lower it across the board, you could just grab your volume level here and bring it down. Although I'm going to undo that. You could change it in your inspector, but that's going to change the entire track for you. You can also come down and adjust your fader over here, and that's also going to adjust the entire track. So I want the music to go down only when I'm talking, and when I'm not talking, I want the volume to go back up. So in order to do that, we need to turn on audio ducking. And in order to turn on audio ducking, you want to come to your dynamic section and double click on there. Again, the same dynamics window that we had on our vocal track. And the thing we want to use here is the compressor. So I'm going to come, I'm going to turn on the compressor. And remember how we talked about the send and listen buttons uh, earlier? Well, now we want to click on the listen button. So we have our vocal track sending and we have our music track listening. So what that's going to do is DaVinci Resolve on this track with the music is going to listen for audio from our speaking track. And this is gonna allow us to adjust the volume and level of the music track while the speaking is happening. So 
It's a little confusing. Let's just play through it and I'm going to show you what it does. So I'm going to adjust this threshold here and that's going to set the point where my music is going to start to get quieter. And I'm also going to turn up the ratio a little bit more. Just crank that bad boy up and let's play through and I'm going to adjust the threshold and you're going to see how it works here. So I'm going to start with it high and as I lower it, you're going to notice the volume of the music track gets quieter. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out. And okay, so I've brought it down to almost minus 40 decibels. Now you notice it kinda seems a little wonky, like it's coming and going a little bit. So we need to adjust a few more things. Down on the bottom here, we have our attack, hold, and release. I'm gonna leave my attack where it is. For the hold, actually I wanna bring that up. And again, I do maybe between, you know, around 12, 1200 milliseconds here, which is like 1.2 seconds. And the release, I wanna to come to about 1500, which is about a second and a half. And then I'm gonna play through, and now it should sound a little bit cleaner. Instead of sound like it's cutting in and out real quick, it should be a little bit smoother now. So let's listen. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here. So it came in real quick and hard there. So I might wanna slow the attack down a little bit. Let's do uh, five milliseconds there for the attack so that it doesn't cut in and cut off so sharp. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use. In All right, it's not too bad, it sounded pretty good. And keep in mind, I'm watching my input meter as well as my output meter. And for my music track here, I wanna make sure my output falls in the minus 20 to minus 25 range somewhere so that it's nice and below my talking track, which is up here in the minus 10 to minus 15 range. So let's see where it's falling on our meter here. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you. So now it seems like it's too much, so I'm gonna bring the threshold back up. I'm gonna play the video and I'm gonna adjust that threshold until my uh, music track's somewhere in this uh, minus 25 range. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so I think that worked out pretty good. Um, we see that it is around that minus 25 range. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna leave that where it is for now. And actually just for uh, illustration purposes, I'm gonna actually drag my clip over to where the music is a little bit louder, just so we can see the difference here. Let's play through and you'll hear it when it kicks in. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to- And if we look at our meters audio, here, if we look at our meters, you can see it's peaking at about minus 20, so I could even bring it back just a touch and uh, play through, but I think that's sounding pretty good. You can hear me clearly. We've got the music in the background, and then I'm gonna start towards the end of the clip here. Once I'm done talking, we should hear that music go right back up to the volume we want it to be at. Audio, a little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. So you can see on our meter here, our output went right back up to where we originally set it. So that's how you would do audio ducking. It's gonna automatically duck the audio or lower the audio for your music track around any of your speaking points or any channel actually that you have the send button checked on. So audio ducking, super helpful. I use it all the time uh, and it's a really great feature here in DaVinci Resolve. So lastly, I'm gonna play through both tracks here and if I wanna make any overall adjustments to the tracks, I'm gonna use my faders because I've already set the rest of my levels to be where I want them to be. And if I feel like just based on how it sounds that I want a little more volume on a particular track, then I can adjust my faders here. But otherwise, I think we're gonna be good to go. So let's play through and see how all our changes sound. Welcome to the audio crash course here, guys. This is gonna be a little clip here we're gonna use in our DaVinci Resolve tutorial to show you how to work with your audio. A little crash course, hope this helps out, and uh, let's get into it. All right, so there we go. I think our audio sounded pretty good. I like what we've done so far. I hope this is helpful to you guys. And again, there's so many cool features and cool tools that you can use here on your audio. This is just scratching the surface with a few of them to help you get your audio sounding good in your videos, help you put a music track under there, let it duck by itself so you don't have to go in and change the volumes and levels of your music track and all that kind of stuff. So I've got lots of other videos on audio in DaVinci Resolve that go more into depth on some of the things we've already talked about, as well as other things that are super cool that you can do here in DaVinci Resolve with your audio. So there you go, there's our DaVinci Resolve audio crash course here, and I uh, really just hope that it helped you get a better understanding of how you can work with your audio in DaVinci Resolve. 
and how you can make your audio sound even better than uh, if you didn't do anything to it. So again, my name is Jay Yudlovsky. Consider subscribing to my channel if you want to learn about DaVinci Resolve, photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even video and video editing. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.